Sadly, for those of you who watched this morning, I'm not able to say that Tesla stock finished in the green. <laughs> but happy, happy to say that after dropping, um, I forget, it was like nine or 10 points, it did finish back up somewhere only five down. The overall market did not recover quite so nicely as Tesla did. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of a typical situation. But if you look at it, the week has started off quite well for Tesla. So um, this is Randy Kirk. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, hit hit like, hit subscribe, hit notify. You know what to do. And then uh, in a little while, we will spend a minute, just a minute, because these things are selling every single day. Lots and lots and lots of them. So if you haven't got yours yet, you're going to want to hear about it again. It, or maybe you've never heard about it to begin with. So we'll talk about that later. And we'll talk about Patreon. Maybe you want to join Patreon. All right. Number one, let's talk about the Cybertruck delay headline, okay? So uh, I forget, I don't even remember which which uh, uh, media it was today uh, decided that they would try to capture some uh, some interest by putting up a Cybertruck delay. I think that might have been Business Insider, a, a very, very, very bad publication. And when I say bad, I mean just horrible reporting, not accurate. Anyway, um, uh, as far as we know, there's no Cybertruck delay. Now, um, that got a little bit more confusing today because now they've product, uh, halted production at both Gig, at Giga Texas across the board, Model Y and Cybertruck. Um, there's, they've halted production for upgrading and optimization. No key, this is coming in from folks with the, with the drone flyovers. So we don't know whether this is one day, we don't know this is three days, we don't know if it's the rest of the week, no clue as to how long this is gonna happen. We'll talk later about why this would be a really good week to make the announcement, or maybe by Monday to make the announcement about Cybertruck handover. But if the factory is shut down, is that gonna happen during a shot? Anyway, we'll see, who knows? All right, so then another headline, Mexico is now delayed until 2026 or 2027. Another publication whose name shall be not mentioned because I forgot to write it down. Uh, is that, um, they talked to some of the Chinese suppliers who they said Tesla had been all excited. You got to get over here. You got to get start finding a place. You got to start, you know, buying some property. You got to start building a building because we're going to be, you know, cranking these babies out by 2025 and uh, or even late 2024. And we need you to be on board. Uh, so a couple of these suppliers said, now Tesla's like all relaxed and no big deal and probably won't start making them till 26. And then one of them said, it might not even be till 2027. I'm going to call hogwash. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say, okay, there was a, a, a tweet yesterday. I think it was uh, uh, yesterday that uh, uh, there is issue, you know, they're waiting for one more permit. Now, maybe there's more than one permit ne necessary. Uh, I agree. It is a lot longer than anybody expected, no matter what some of my friends who have been trying to say, come on, Randy, uh, it's only been uh, a month longer. Well, no, no, now it's a lot longer and it is a little bit unnerving, but I absolutely would be shocked if it's going to be 2026 or 2027. Uh, we would have heard about it and or they would have made other arrangements immediately if they thought that uh, the Mexican government was going to hold them up that long because this is a major, the 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 uh, version three uh, vehicles is a major, major effort by Tesla. So this is, I'm going to call baloney on this one. All right, uh, let's go to one more of the negative uh, headlines that's been going around. Elon borrows a billion dollars from SpaceX. Uh, people have said, well, gee whiz, that's odd. You know, that doesn't happen very often. Well, no, there isn't many people for whom borrowing a billion dollars would even be. <laughs> I, they used to say that you you know you're rich when you have the ability to borrow a million dollars. Well, you know you're really rich if you have the ability to borrow a billion dollars. So his alternative with SpaceX is he could have sold shares. Uh, I'm sure he went to the major shareholders and the board and everybody else and said, which would you rather me do? sell off a billion dollars worth of stock, or would you rather me borrow a billion dollars for a bit? Well, anyway, um, I don't see this as being at all concerning, uh, certainly not concerning for Tesla stock. Um, and uh, he owns, I think it's still 50% or somewhere close to 50% of SpaceX. So um, yeah, I think he can do what he wants. All right. Um, now, one of the things I'm doing, I've, I've been waiting for any kind of numbers on the Highland sales. I, it's weird 
that nobody anywhere, we've had a couple of rumors, some, one rumor was 60,000, one rumor was 90,000, and that was supposed to be just Chinese uh, orders coming in from, from, from in, the, in the China showrooms. You know, nothing from Europe, nothing from Australia. I mean, we, we, we've got nothing from England. We have nothing yet. Zip zero, not one person, not one, nobody's saying here's the, the schedule, uh, nothing. So I, I'm kind of shocked that we haven't, haven't heard that yet. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Let's talk a little bit about the overall economy and why the stocks are down so badly today and probably not going to bounce back anytime soon unless there's some significant news that would cause that. Well, bonds, the 10-year bond stuck its nose above 4.3 today. I know I told you that 4.22, 4.2 was kind of the sticking point. Well, it's past 4.2, and now it's thinking it wants to go past 4.3. Um, now, long-term thinking, uh, you go back and look at the chart. Um, from 1980 until 2007, the 10-year bond was much, much higher. We're talking 15%, 10%, 8%. It wasn't until 2007, uh, just before the big, uh, right at the time when the big crash was happening, that the bond, the 10-year bond uh, came down below uh, the current levels, down to below 5% and then below 4 And then, of course, over the last uh, 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 14, 15 years, it's been very, very low because of the effort to get the economy back started again. Um, all right, the Fed, the Fed beige book. Uh, came out today. Well, let me go back to this other for just a second. I mean, it's all about the oil. There's nothing else. Okay. It's oil and bonds. I talked to you about a lot this morning. If you want to go back and look at this morning's show, I'm not going to rehash all of it, but oil continues up um, and oil. I'll talk, in fact, I'll talk more about it later. So let's, let's forget it for now. Let's talk about the beige book. Uh, the beige book said there was modest growth. They said it was tourism's last gasp. So everybody that's wanted to travel and couldn't travel, and it's finally, they have finally traveled. Although I've read other reports that are saying uh, there's quite a lot of interest in some fall travel this year. So we'll see what happens on that. Uh, new orders, manufacturing orders, wholesale orders are stable or down. Um, companies are struggling to pass on cost increases. So that's going to put pressure on margins. At the same time, I think I mentioned a headline this morning that was saying that, no, it was yesterday, um, that was saying that uh, the average estimate for earnings for major corporations like the uh, the S and P five hundred are sh are up. They're actually uh, increasing uh, each week. They've been going up and up. So is the market <laughs> down? Is the market up? Is the economy up? Is I mean, it's really it's uh, it's it's been an odd time that we've been through these last three or four years. Um, and we're we're starting to level off. It's starting to get a little more normal. And then, of course, Saudi and Russia comes along to mess up the plan. Um, so most districts that are covered, uh, most of the districts across the United States reported price growth slowing overall. Um, the summary of surveys, uh, interviews conducted across the 12 districts, this is through August 28th. It added that nearly all districts indicated businesses renewed their previous unfulfilled expectations that wage growth will slow broadly in the near term. This is the most important thing that came out of the Beige Book. Their survey said the expectations of the businesses surveyed is that job uh, wage growth will slow broadly in the near term. I mentioned it the other day, several articles are talking about it now because they, they watch this channel and they're finally getting around to mentioning what's happening now is strategic hiring and strategic firing. You're not going to have broad layoffs like we've had in the past. You're not going to have people hiring like crazy, trying to find that last person that could, they could possibly find that isn't working. Now you're going to have people that are going to be, they're still going to be hiring because they're showing that sales are slow, going up a little. So they do need to hire. They're not going to they're, they're going to continue probably to uh, hold on to these people they've trained, but it's going to be way strategic in terms of what goes on as we go forward, which is going to help with what production. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, with um, with uh, uh, it's, it's going to make the economy stronger because we're going to have greater productivity as these strategic hires are made and strategic layoffs and firings are happening. So productivity is what we've been talking about, talking about, talking about. 
So um, the uh, uh, ISM data came in and it showed service sector activity strengthening in August. Okay, so there you go. Right after that happened, treasury yields jumped, jumped, right? They were already high because of oil. And then, okay, here's a, a piece of evidence that maybe inflation is not done with. And so you get another jump. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so um, the two-year rate got over 5% again. Goldman Sachs um, said today they're pegging oil at $107. That would be Brent not Texas Intermediate, Brent. So uh, Texas Intermediate would probably be about 104 if Brent is at 107, usually about $3 apart. So when they were asked uh, about the Russian and Saudi supply cuts on Wednesday, the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, told reporters, President Joe Biden is focused on trying to do everything within his toolkit to be able to get lower prices for consumers in the, at the gas pump. Oh, really? And then they put aside the largest chunk of land ever just, just today in Alaska saying, ah, no drilling anywhere in that part. Hundreds of thousands, I forget how many acres, a whole bunch. Anyway, um, that's a signal. It, it may not be important in the short term, but it's a signal. It's saying, oh, we want more, we need more oil uh, because we want the gas prices to be lower and we're going to do everything we can, every tool. And then on that very day is the day that you announce that you're taking a whole bunch of really high potential production capacity land off the off the and canceling leases that were already established uh four or five years ago all right i don't know what to say i'm sorry um forbes reports that the highland is getting closer to european luxury car levels at much lower prices oh did you hear that on this channel tesla will attend the detroit auto show for the first time in eight years this after just attending the german show the uh, Detroit Auto Show will be September 13 to 24. What are they going to show? Well, are they going to show the Highland in America? I mean, you're going to go to this show for 13th, 24th, that's 10 days. You're going to be in this show. You got to show the Highland, right? Are you not going to show the Cybertruck? Well, that'd be weird. What about Juniper? Hmm. <laughs> Well, for me, it would make sense to announce the CT, the Cybertruck handover, say Monday. Then Wednesday, you've got the show in Detroit. That would be, that's how I would do it. You, you, Monday's a good day for PR. So you have the announcement on Monday. You announce the prices, you announce the specs, you announce the date that you're going to have the handover. And Wednesday, you've got the Detroit show. So you keep that, you keep that PR going. So now people are out there, they're looking at it. And by the way, <laughs> there's going to be Tesla and Ford will be offering street course ride-in drives for the show attendees outside at Huntington Place. Visitors will be able to get behind the wheel and take select products for a quick spin over portions of the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix downtown race circuit. Well, what better time <laughs> for more PR to let people drive the Highland and see how quiet it is and see how much better the suspension is and, and check out the interior and stuff um, than at this Detroit show. What better time than to have the Cybertruck and let some people for the very first time get in this thing and drive it around that circuit. I mean, I, this is... I, this is just what I would do, okay? I don't, <laughs> what can I tell you? So that's what's happening next week. I guess we'll all be poised to find out what happens between now and then and during, because we are getting close to the end of September. It would be time to announce the handover. Uh, but as I mentioned above, now we've got uh, Austin shut down uh, for what? For a day, for three days, we don't know. Last thing on the list today is Indonesia is out for the foreseeable future, according to folks in Indonesia. Um, there are, are also rumors right now that the India announcement is also very, very close at hand. Those are just rumors. That's how I'm going to report them. All right. So um, let's take a quick look here at this guy. All right. If you haven't bought, if you haven't bought it yet, what's holding you up? You should be buying three or four because you want to you want to put them everywhere. Okay. You want you want to have this thing. Uh, do you do you ever drink a beer in the backyard? Do you have a cooler back there? Do you have a refrigerator in the backyard? Um, you need one back there. <laughs> you need one for the campground. You need one for your cabin. You need one for your for your uh, your RV. I mean, how many of these things? You probably need 10. You need some for friends and 
you know, your next door neighbor, your brother, and they come in beautiful gift boxes. I mean, look at this thing. I know I've said this before. You're getting tired of hearing it. Turn it, turn it off. It's okay. You don't have to listen until the end. I don't think I'm going to say anything important. <laughs> Maybe I am. All right. So anyway, here's the camo version. By the way, when you order, could you please let me know? Camo or regular or call it what you want, aluminum, what, something. Make sure that it's clear because then I, it takes me an extra step to write you back and ask. And then you have to be interrupted again. Anyway, check out the box. I mean, it's kind of one of those Apple kind of boxes, you know. Anyway, 25 bucks. Um, I was talking to uh, one guy the other day who knows something about this stuff. And he says, man, I would have thought that thing was like 35 or $40. And I'm like, nope, it's only 25 bucks. And that counts freight. I mean, I should be charging an extra, it's cost me $5 to ship it. So I should be charging an extra $5 for freight. I, I'm thinking maybe on Amazon, I will. So anyway, if you need one or two or three or four or five, just send $25 each, send me off, send that off to me. And uh, PayPal, you got the information below in the description. Um, it's paypal.me forward slash, and it has to be lowercase Randy Kirk. And uh, so send that off. Uh, if, you, if you're out of the country, I've gotten a number of orders from overseas uh, or from Canada, Mexico, et cetera. It doesn't matter if you're not in the United States. No matter what, I'm going to send it by DHL. It's going to cost me extra, so I need you to add another $20. Okay, so that made $45, but only one time. Don't add it over and over again. Just if you if you order two, that would be $50 plus the 20. If you order three, 75 plus the 20. And then let me know which one you want, the camo or the regular. All right, now you can get it for free. It's easy enough to get it for free or as a gift. When you join Patreon at the $10 level, you get it. You get the you know, beautiful bottle opener, magnet to go on your refrigerator or any place else that's magnetized. Um, and so if you join at the $10 level, you get one for free. Again, please let me know, <laughs> camouflage or not. Okay, um, that's all I've got for you right now, except I want to let you know that tomorrow I got Brian back and it's going to be a great show. It's one of the, we were so thrilled when we got done recording it. We thought this is one of our better deals. <laughs> so anyway, that'll be tomorrow midday in the morning. Of course, as always, you've got the uh, After the Bell show. And tomorrow is going to be a pretty significant day, I think, overall in the market. We should be paying attention to what happens tomorrow. I'll tell you why tomorrow morning. This is Randy Kirk. It has been phenomenal talking with you.